Hey guys, I'm Meg from Live and Stamps and this is Maker Mornings with Meg, Wednesday edition. So uh, I'm excited to stamp with you guys today and the card we're gonna make is one, okay, this stamp set has been sitting on my shelf for uh, two years, I think, and it was really intimidating. I thought, oh my gosh, that's so difficult. I am not gonna use that. Um, I'll get around to it later. Well, um, later finally came because it's about to retire. And I will tell you, when I opened the stamp set to make this card, I looked at how the dies worked and I thought, oh my gosh, this is so simple. Why have I not been using this for two years? Uh, because it's absolutely darling and can be used with any stamp set, not just the one that we are using today. Uh, so if this has been on your mm, intriguing wish list, I highly recommend that you um, check out the Give It A Whirl dies, which we are going to use today. So we're gonna cover um, sort of the basics to like out there in the galaxy today. Um, we're gonna talk about mounting your stamps, just a quick overview. We're going to um, talk about Stampin' Blends markers and we're gonna make a fun card that moves. So uh, let's see, and I am gonna flip you guys back up on my screen here. Let's Oops, see. I... sorry about that. Um, okay, so that I can see what we're doing. And um, we also have a new thing um, today, I don't know how this works really. We'll figure it out together, but we have stars. And so some of you might end up, because you're frequent watchers, you might end up getting stars for free from Facebook. Um, if you're watching on Facebook and uh, you can share them with me if you would like or share them with our stamping community. And we're supposed to come up with some kind of like fun goal together. Like if we get, I don't know, 100 stars, um, then we will, like I'll do something fun, like give you a tour. So if you have an idea of something that you would like to see from me and you're like, okay, so if the if we get, Meg gets enough stars, then this is what we should do, then make sure you leave that in a comment, so. All right, are you guys ready to get started? Um, the other thing we're gonna use today is the um, Waves of the Ocean Designer Series paper, which is um, a great way um, to incorporate with this stamp set, great thing to incorporate. It's uh, not only for the ocean, but also makes great outer space cards. Oh, I didn't show you our stamp set. Stellar birthday, here's what we're doing. All right, guys, we got a lot to cover today. Ready to get started? I'm gonna flip you down and uh, we'll get started. Good morning in Ohio, uh, Connie. Good to see you guys. I love when everybody says hi. It's just, it makes me feel like I'm actually talking to people rather than just talking to myself. So, which is always a good thing. All right, so um, let's do, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna not do first things first. We're gonna start um, a little bit uh, out and then we'll kind of back up. So we're gonna go ahead and begin with the dies for um, this set. So when you get the um, dies, they come actually on two sheets because there are um, about a zillion of them included in this um, die set. And you have this main card frame, which is going to cut out um, a, well, okay, it's gonna cut this part out. And then there's a little post in the middle and the post fits with the rings that are on these shape dies. So to make the shape part for your hole um, and have it perfectly spaced to fit where your ring is gonna go, um, you just drop that right over there. So you could have um, the like, you know, window shaped die, this little um, pie shaped one. There is a heart shaped window. Um, there's a rectangle shaped window and then there's this circle one. So. Um, this is really slick. We're gonna go ahead and cut this together. And then there is also the wheel that is going to fit in here. And this is gonna be the one that we're gonna cut out um, to sort of do our um, do our, our background so that we stamp our greeting and so forth on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring um, in our layers for this and we're gonna go ahead and cut these. So our paper for the background, which is a super fabulous space companion for our little astronauts is Waves of the Ocean Designer Series paper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this ring on here so that it fits. And then I'm going to set this here on our paper. And then I'm going to use our, I'm gonna do it a little off to the side. I'm gonna use our handy dandy washi tape to hold this all in place so that it doesn't shift when I put it through our die cut machine. And then I also have a um, piece here, there it went, um, that's not the one I need, a piece here of basic white that I'm going to um, go ahead and cut our wheel from. 
So let's go ahead and do that together. Um, usually I die cut ahead of time for you guys, but I really wanted you to see how this one worked because um, like I said, I had this set for years and I was really intimidated by it. And so I never took it out of the package. Shame on me. And so finally um, I took it out and I thought, oh my gosh, this is so much easier than expected. So um, good morning. Let's see. All right, so you'll notice I put that through in a diagonal. You always want your square dies to go through on a diagonal if possible. Um, those square edges can really thump across there and it's just easier um, on your machine if you put them in a corner first. All right, so now we have our hole here and then this hole in the center. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut our wheel and pop this through. So now we have our wheel also to go with. And those dies are all part of the set. So great way to mix and match. All right, so now um, we want to work on, um, it's tempting to wanna to put it together, but we do have to wait a little bit because we want to um, go ahead and do some stamping on here. So I'm gonna grab my stamp set and uh, I promised to show a quick reminder on how to mount your stamps. I have some new stampers ask about this recently. So when your stamps come, there's a sticker sheet, there's a rubber package, and the easiest way to do this is to just go ahead and pop that rubber out, peel the backing layer off, okay, and I set that aside, so that's the rubber part. The other part comes from the sticker, and there's one side of your um, sheet that is flat and the other side has the sticker die cut and cracks on it. So just bend a little bit to um, expose those sticker backing cracks. Peel those off, but leave the sticker on there. And then you're just gonna take this, I lay it flat on my table, I pick up my uh, stamp and I just set it on there. The die cut shape is the same for the sticker and the rubber, so they should match exactly. I just set it down on there and then I just peel the sticker backing off and there we have our stamp ready to go. Now, if you mount yours differently, that is certainly a-okay. Um, this is how I do mine. The other thing that I do, because the stamps often have a lot of um, pieces uh, in a set and you don't wanna lose any, I will often take my backing paper off of the rubber. Okay, oops, that one I got, just got, I don't want that to happen. Um, I'll take my backing paper off of the rubber and then put it sort of on the back side. So this is the, the side that was um, against the rubber before. And I'll slide it in here between the layer of my um, stamp case and the um, inside or the outside cover. And that way I know that I can um, go ahead and pop these back on here and I can see at a glance whether I've got my um, whether I've got my stamps put back together in the case or I have any stray ones floating around. Uh, and then I just usually toss my rubber so you can save it if you want to. We'll mess with that one later, okay? All right, so that being said, um, I have stamped here um, already and I'm just using my Knight of Navy ink pad. And the reason that I stamped these guys ahead um, is that I want this Knight of Navy ink to be really dry. You can use your Stampin' Blends markers um, with your classic pads with a dark color and then a really light blend. You may find that you get just a little bit of pickup. And so um, you want to avoid, um, you know, having that ink still be wet, okay? So to do our background here for our coloring, um, Stampin' Blends markers, my formula is always to do one layer of color first. So this is the light smoky slate. And I do one layer of the light. I'm gonna go ahead and color here on his um, little space suit. And then I think I'm gonna make his belt and um, stars and so forth uh, yellow. And I'm gonna color our space dog, our companion dog here. And I'm just gonna give it a light base coat. And then um, our rocket ship too is gonna get a light base coat here of the smoky slate. Now, if you're thinking um, that you have uh, been interested in starting with Stampin' Blends markers, but you weren't sure um, how to begin, I kind of like to order my first Stampin' Blends based on a project um, that I have in mind. And now I'm gonna go back with the darker blend and I'm going to give a shadow um, line just at the edge where like um, his boots would be tucked in or 
um, sort of under this rocket edge. And then I'm just gonna color the dog spots dark. I'm gonna color his boots um, bottoms dark. Uh, pick a project that you know you are wanting to use with Stampin' Blends um, and go ahead and start there with your color selections and then you can kind of build your collection as you go from project to project. And then just to give our rocket some shape, I'm gonna go a little around the, the edge here, the bottoms of our fins. Um, we'll pretend that the window sticks out so it makes a little shadow. So that's step two. So step one, light marker. Step two, dark marker. Step three, go back and color just a little bit at the intersection where you're blending so that you get an ease um, between those colors. Right here is probably the easiest place to see it. See how we're getting just a little bit more um, easing between, a little more transition between those colors so that it really gives some shape to our um, item, okay? Rather than having it be just totally flat. All right, let's see, we'll go back with our yellow and um, I might do a little bit less like shading here with our yellow because it tends to um, be pretty light. Let's see, I'll go with our darker. This is so saffron. The link is in the video description for all of the um, colors and so forth that I'm using, all the supplies. And I'll do his space boots yellow and we'll just, because it's handy, I'll make this guy blonde and give him a color there. We're gonna give a yellow edge to our um, spaceship and then let's see a little there. And then finally, um, we're gonna give just a teeny little touch here um, to his tongue so that we have a little bit of Poppy Parade and some spaceship um, elements there. And then we're going to um, finish up. I have um, a couple of the um, light, medium, um, deep kinds of numbers. These are the, um, the Stampin' Blends sort of selection of skin tones and they come in um, all the colors uh, in a wide range. So here, let me get these for you. Um, They've been really popular, so here's all of them. They're 10. Um, they've been really popular, so they're not all available right now, but they will be back in the next catalog. So don't fret if you um, are still looking for some of those. This one is SU900, and they kind of each have a number, and then they also each belong to like a, um, a medium light, medium dark, medium... I don't remember what they are. So they're linked in the video description. All right, so I'm gonna go with one of the light ones and then I'm gonna go, this is the um, SU600, so someplace in the middle-ish. And I'm gonna go ahead and color around the edge. And if you're thinking um, that that is because there's a shadow around his little space helmet, it is. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do that same trick that we just used with the same color where you color at the intersection with a lighter marker. And what that helps to do is it helps to shape the shadow, okay? So you can kind of see, I'm gonna go a little bit under his hair there, okay? So now you can see that his little face, um, we're gonna go a little under his nose, around the bottom of his mouth, okay? So his cheeks are gonna be probably the lightest and a little around his eyes. So think about where shadows fall on a face and that is where you're gonna start to sort of add that extra color. Oh, our little doggy boots here are not yellow yet. Let's get those. And here, okay. So now back to our card. Um, we're gonna go ahead and use these elements on the front of our card, and then we're going to use the wheel here on the inside of our card. So, good morning. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and stamp some elements on here. So one of the things you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to position your um, greeting so that it shows through the holes. And so Stampin' Up! conveniently has these um, brads right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and use one of the big ones so that I don't have a problem. Um, these are the round and square brads. And uh, I'll show you how we're gonna cover this up a little bit later. All right, so here is the hole. I put, just put this through the hole that was punched um, when we put our die through. There's a little hole cut there. And I'm gonna go ahead and line it up with the hole that fits our um, that fits our uh, our background paper here. So that is all kind of punched through, and this is gonna be temporary because what we want to do is we want to stamp our greeting so that. Okay, that was close. <laughs> um, handy chamois. We're all about the 101 today. 
um, you can use your chamois to wipe um, stray ink off of your fingers when you're stamping. So, okay, let's try not to drop our stamp again. I'm gonna go ahead and take this now and I'm gonna stamp right through the window, which ensures that it is in the correct orientation so that when it gets spun around, it will fit um, just exactly where I want it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off of here again um, so that I can add some extra images. And we'll go ahead and add some stars so that they're a little bit everywhere. We'll add some planets here kind of to our thing. And these, we don't really care kind of where they show up in the window, so I'm not gonna worry too much about where I've actually put them, okay? All right, and then um, if you want to, you can add a little bit of um, color to this. And you can see, um, this is what I was talking about, when you freshly stamped your Knight of Navy, um, you have to be a little bit more careful about your Stampin' Blends markers because it might pick up a little of that color while that ink is still drying. It's really easy, all you do is just sort of scribble out on your scratch paper or your um, grid paper so that you're cleaning off the tip of that marker um, so that you're not continuing to spread that extra navy color around, okay? Now if you stamp and let it sit for a while to make sure it's super dry, it's much easier, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, and then we'll give a little shout out to our planets here, um, and there we go, okay. All right, now um, the last thing we want to do is before we assemble, we want to add in um, the cutest little accents here um, that are included in the set. And those are these little die cut arrows, these little stitch arrows. And they um, let you add the stitch lines to the edge of the card so that you know um, when this person receives this card that they are going to want to go ahead and turn it. So. I'm gonna go ahead, let's see. Let's think about how we want this to be. We want our greeting to be hidden, and then we want them to turn so that the greeting shows up. And if they turn it, let's see, the arrows are pointed down, so they would turn it this way, and it would make that show up right away. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop this here on the edge, right close, and Let's see, we can just do this with our little mini machine here. You um, will need the larger Stampin' Cotton Emboss machine to do the um, to do the full-size die for this, the one that cuts the card background, but you can, of course, cut your little mini parts here with the mini machine in a hurry. Okay. And now, oh, I kind of got off the edge. All right, well, I should have done a better job of placing that. But you can see where that little um, circle is gonna be on the edge. I didn't use my washi tape. Shame for shame. All right, well, that's okay. Uh, we, we got some fun stuff to put on here anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and mount our pieces for this. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this on the back. Actually, before I do that, I need to um, fold my card base. So I have here a Knight of Navy card base, and this is a great color to go with waves of the ocean. It's a super deep blue, um, lots of good saturation. And what I need to know is I need to know where to put the hole um, that's gonna go on the front of my card. So before I line this all up, or before I stick it all together, I'm gonna grab my Take Your Pick tool, um, and I'm going to go ahead and pop um, a dot through there. I'm just going to use the pokey end and I'm going to poke it through the front of my card because I want my wheel here to be attached to the front of my card. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to line everything up again. I have my reach for the stars wheel. I have my card topper and I have my card base and those are all gonna go together, and then I'm just gonna open up the brad here on the inside. We're gonna cover that later, so don't fret about the fact that it's gonna mess up the look of your card. And there, you can see here where we put our um, little tourney windows. Now, you want to attach this front, but you wanna do it so that you have some extra space to work with. So my strategy for this is to go ahead and pop a Stampin' Dimensional um, under each corner, and then I'm gonna show you where I put one um, extra so that we get a nice um, separation here between these two layers. Okay, and then I'm gonna pop one here um, in the space below um, the wheel. Okay, can you kind of see how that goes in there? There we go. 
um, so that it's going to stick our card base down and sort of leave an extra um, pop up there so that it's just really easy to um, access this wheel. Okay, there's our little reach for the stars greeting. All right, now we got some things to pop here on the front of our card. Um, we're going to go ahead and add the um, greeting to our card. So I've got a strip here of basic white. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this in uh, Knight of Navy. And let's see, okay, I'm gonna show you this because I didn't get quite as much ink on there as I wanted. So we're gonna do one more um, stamp and I'm gonna show you. I'm actually, I'm inking up at the edge of my pad where I think um, the there's a little bit more ink available. So now when I stamp it, I'm gonna stamp, I'm gonna hold for a second. I'm not rocking or anything like that. I'm just pressing it down and there we have um, a much nicer transfer of ink um, to our project. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut a banner tail. And this is going to layer here on the front of our card. Now, because we have a lot of layers going on, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just mount this one flat. So I'll use my seal and pop that on there. And then we want a, um, a little decor guy here. So I'm gonna use my astronaut and he's gonna kind of float there in space. Um, a tip for you, this is sort of my 101 with scissors. The paper snips are terrific. They are a fine detail scissor. I wouldn't wanna cut this out with like a giant, like four inch bladed scissor um, because you just don't get the control. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna hold your scissors if you're right-handed in your right hand and turn your paper with your left. You guys wanna see that again? So I only cut with my right hand. I only turn with my left hand. See how that works? That way you get a nice continuous um, cut line that's pretty fluid and it gives you a little bit more control. And if you uh, are not a fussy cutting fan, usually I find um, that people are kind of totally anti, which I used to be, but I, I just like having access to more um, cutout images. So I've kind of learned to embrace the fussy cutting. So turn with your free hand, just focus on squeezing the scissors with your main scissor hand, your right hand. Okay, sorry left. All right, so we've got our elements. Our little astronaut is gonna go here and he, um, I'm going to pop up with Stampin' Dimensionals. Um, there is also a um, girl version of the astronaut, so everyone can be an astronaut. All right, oops. Okay, yeah, we almost dropped it there. So I'm gonna pop that on there, and then our little um, doggy friend, um, who's got his little bone floating off into space, he's gonna go up there too. Now, I don't love that this um, little um, Brad here is just kind of hanging out there and showing and everything. Oh, Dora says I make fussy cutting look easy. It's not super tricky, um, just practice. You can, you can do it, I, I know you can. Um, okay. So I'm going to um, go ahead and cover this up. Now, included in the die set, because this die set is so robust, like I said, it sat on my shelf for sadly two catalogs and now it's about to disappear and I'm sad because I just totally missed out on showing you guys other cards with it. Um, but in addition to the like mechanic parts of this, there is a fabulous set of three hearts, hello, um, a banner greeting, a scalloped die or stitched circle. Um, oh, four hearts. Oh my gosh. Then there are two sets of these star dies. Um, not even just one. You guys know I love a die set. Okay, I'm just looking for my other one. Oh, it's here somewhere. Um, you guys know I love a die set that has multiples. There are three clouds, um, some fun little dots, and then two sets of the same um, star die. So um, lots and lots of great pieces. It's It's a terrific one, so... It's on the last chance list, don't miss it. So I have these cut from the So Saffron cardstock that matches our So Saffron marker. And I've got, I just went ahead and cut both at the same time. So I've got a set of six and we're gonna use some on the front of our cards. So first thing, uh, oh, Doris asked which die set this was. Um, thanks Doris. This is the Give It A Whirl dies. Um, there are, um, they're a great window card kind of thing. So if you didn't see at the beginning when I talked about it, you might um, consider going back and um, checking. Ooh, that was a lot of glue. 
um, checking at the beginning when I talked about all the different parts of this die. So this is, um, when I use this glue, I always say if you can see it, it's enough. This is way too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, pick some of it off with my other pieces to go ahead and decorate the rest of my card. So let's see, now if pieces are too small to handle easily, remember um, to go ahead and use your take your pick tool um, to handle them. That way you don't have to stress about um, picking them up and getting your fingers in there and stuff like that. Okay, this looks like a good amount of glue to me. I really don't wanna glue my card shut or anything like that. So I've got this now placed here on top of our brad. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna cover the brad so no one will see it. And it's going to um, also kind of add an extra little decoration to our card. So let's see, let's pop another star here. And that was a lot of glue too. My glue must be popping out. So I'm gonna use that same little glue bit to pick up some glue for this star and pop it here. And then we'll pop this star I have it right side up? I do, um, here on that bit, okay? So now we have our front of our card pretty well decorated and you can see how our, um, let's see, how our pieces kind of turn here. Now we're gonna um, keep that star from turning there in the center, so you might need to pull up that brad just a teeny bit. I'll show you what to do when you get to the inside. So there, is where our turny part goes and we have that sweet little message. So there are a lot of different messages in this set. So you can kind of mix and match them. So you could have multiple messages on here. Ah, Kim says she has two um, adult astrophysicists that will love this card theme. Yes, right? Um, don't forget that the waves of the ocean paper is limited time. So if you're looking for this gorgeous um, space background, that one you're gonna wanna add to your projects pretty soon. All right. So on the inside of our card, I don't know about you, but it bugs me a little that we have this giant brad here. So we want to cover this up. And I don't want it to really keep turning. I want it to just stay straight. So I'm going to pop on um, two strips of Stampin' Dimensionals. And I just cut the edges here from my sheet. Remember, this whole sheet of Dimensionals is, is fair game. Don't throw away when you... When you come down to the edge and you have only like this strip left, don't throw it away, save that. Those are like gold. There's lots of things you can do with them. And then I'm going to peel these backings off and I'm gonna pop our rocket ship on here and it's going to kind of cover that up. All right, and then lastly, I have one star left and so I wanna continue our star theme from the front of our card. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pop um, some um, glue on the back there and I'm going to pop that just kind of under the edge there so that it pulls that little element together and then we're going to stamp on this side. So I have um, a sheet of cardstock. This, um, our card base was five and a half by eight and a half. The card layer is four by five and a quarter so it fits in there and I have a strip of that um, waves of the ocean paper that we're just going to pop down here at the bottom as our um, decor item. But before I do that I'm going to do my stamping. Uh, because once you glue things down, you're pretty well set. Um, until then, you can move stuff around and uh, flip it over if you find that you make a mistake. And then, of course, um, we have all of the other greetings here. So we could do there's no one like you in the whole universe or um, have a stellar birthday. And so I'm going to do a quick mount of one more stamp. Um, some people ask me this sometimes. Do you mount all of your stamps at once? Um, so I've peeled the backing off and then I'm going to peel the the little um, backing off paper. I sometimes do if I'm like watching TV or you know something like that, I'll just sit and, and mount a bunch of stamps, but otherwise I tend to mount them when I wanna use them, so. And then I'm gonna just take my stamp and lay it on the sticker and pick that up. Now, um, then you wanna have a block to go with this, put my leftover sticker sheet in here. And when you're done with a stamp, um, you can, of course, wash it here with your chamois. Just do a little pressing there. With red rubber stamps, I find that I press down more than wipe, and I get much more ink off just by pressing into my chamois. Um, and then I would pop this back into my stamp case here where it matches our background. So now you can see I'm kind of cataloging which stamps I've gotten put away. And then to pick up my stamp, I like to, to mount my stamps this way. Some people just stick them on there. I find I get much better results if I set my stamp down 
and then press my black onto it, okay? It's easier to place, it's easier to make sure it's straight and flat and all the things. So there's our have a stellar birthday. And now, since I know my stamping all worked fine, I can pop my strip of paper across the bottom here. Um, this is a fun way to use little scraps of your designer series paper and bring them um, to the inside of your card to just kind of continue those design elements. So there is our um, finish there, okay? All right, how are we doing here? So let's questions do I miss? Um, Gian says she loves the clouds. Um, Sue says she can't keep the margins the same space all the way. You know what, Mar Sue? Um, in case you didn't notice, I didn't either, but like, I don't think it's terribly bothersome that I got a little close to our puppy's feet and it was a little further out here. Um, honestly, there's so much going on in a card that usually um, I find those things are pretty forgiving. So uh, try not to stress, right? Try to be love our own work, um, not stress about those things too much. But I do, I do hear what you say. Um, let's see. So, oh, Sue asked me too about having my scissors sharpened. Yes. So um, these are, these have not been sharpened. I'll tell you how I can tell. These have not been sharpened. Um, the paper snips are really terrific scissors. Um, they will last you many, many years. Um, and they stay nicely sharp for a really long time. Here they are. Um, you can get them sharpened, it's worthwhile. Um, I have a family member who sharpens scissors for me, so that's always helpful. Um, but because the screw on these is fixed, um, you will find that you have, um, when you sharpen, basically they grind away some of the scissor edge. And so um, you'll find that when you look at the tips of these, um, they don't quite meet at the tip anymore. There, can you see that? So this pair here that has my little label on them, they um, don't quite close to the very end, whereas the newer ones that haven't been sharpened, they do. So just know that you can get your scissors sharpened and they're just as good as new then, except um, when you're cutting, you won't want to cut um, all the way to the tip because the tip actually isn't gonna cut. That being said, I don't really care. I don't cut to the tip on my scissors anyway. Um, and the reason for that is when you cut all the way to the tip, um, usually what happens is the, the tip of the scissors um, actually rips the, the top of the cardstock just a little bit because it, it's not continuing to cut. Um, so you get like a little rip at the top. So you're much better off to take your scissors and always just keep cutting and then stop a little bit shy of the tip, a quarter inch of the, from the tip or an eighth an inch from the tip um, so that you get a much smoother cut all the way around. So, Okay, that was a good question. Um, let's see, what else did I miss? Uh, oh, so you guys, uh, I don't know how this stars thing works. Does anybody, did anybody get stars? You might also get um, some free stars from Facebook if you are watching my videos a bunch. They said that they would do that. So if you get the stars from Facebook, feel free to share them with us uh, and we'll kind of come up with some fun, um, fun rewards for reaching our star goal. Uh, let's see. Kim says placing the leftover stamp sheet between the case is great and helpful tip. Uh, yes. Um, that is great because now I can see when I start to wash my stamps, um, and put these away, I can see which ones I'm missing. You really, um, it's so sad, so sad, like a moment of silence, sad. Um, when you realize that you've lost one little stamp from a set. So if you have that backing paper in there, then you know that you're always going to be able to find everything. And Kim also suggested um, using scissors to only use one craft supply like paper. Yeah, um, right? Everybody's who grew up in a house where there were so a sewing, someone who sews knew that to take the fabric scissors and cut paper with them was a quick way to uh, quick way to bear someone's wrath. <laughs> um, so hey, Tanya. Okay, Tanya knows how the star thing works. Yay! Well, okay, that pretty much blew away our goal, Tanya. So I think I set the goal for like 100. I didn't know what to expect, 100 stars. And so now that's 200 stars, which means, um, gosh, we're going to have to follow through. So whatever our, uh, whatever our bonus is uh, for the stars, we're going we're gonna to sort that out. I don't know. Tanya, you're the first star sender as far as I can tell. So maybe 
maybe Tanya should figure out um, what we should, what's it gonna be, Tanya? <laughs> what kind, What do you want to see? You you get to pick the next one for being our, our first star um, star sender achiever, thank you. So we can, we can talk more about that, so. Oh, Sue's asking about stars. Yeah, so I, I don't know that much about them either. I think it's a new thing that Facebook's trying and the idea is like stars are a way to support your favorite um, content creators, whether, um, you know, if you, you know, if you like watching my videos, you can share stars with me um, and then we can, uh, we can come up with like some fun things for those. So um, it's a little bit like um, YouTube, you can get paid for videos on YouTube. So um, it's a little bit related to that, I think. And as common watchers of our uh, Maker Mornings with Meg, you might be getting a bunch of free stars from Facebook. So um, I would love if on Friday, we'll come up with a new goal and it's not gonna be 100 because clearly you guys are awesome already. Um, we'll come up with a new goal on Friday. And let's see. Drum roll, Tanya says Easter something. Okay, so I'm gonna get with Tanya and we're gonna figure out what kind of card she wants to see that's Easter related as our first superstar um, superstar sharer. So did they answer your question, Sue? I don't know. You know how things post up, pop up in Facebook all the time. Uh, who knows what the, who knows where they pop up, but you might get a bunch for free. So all right. I think that that covers us for today. So um, make sure you give us a thumbs up, leave a comment if you liked this video, whether you're watching now or later, um, whether you are super excited about these Give a World Eyes. Like I said, this card is a little bit on the you know sweet side, the juvenile side, and um, the uh, the. Um, Thing about this set though, is that you can do lots and lots of different um, sets with it, different stamps. You don't have to do um, this little give it a whirl. Um, there are all those other pieces in there uh, that let you make different shaped holes. You can do beautiful kind of cards. It is kind of a fun element already. So it sort of has that fun factor to it. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the sky's the limit. You guys get that? Okay. I know that's a terrible joke. Oh, and Kim says, she looked it up, uh, Facebook whale, Facebook stars are a way to pay content creators and say thank you for, um, for uh, the videos that we put together for you. So anyway, thanks guys for watching this morning. It has been really fun to share a stamp set that I found intimidating and turned out that was much, much simpler than I expected. And I will look forward to seeing you guys on Friday with another fabulous card and more Maker Mornings with Meg. So, all right. I saw some laughing faces. Good. Glad you guys like that joke. Sky's the limit. <laughs> Happy stamping, everybody.